When I left, we had the highest membership in our history. We had the greatest diversity in our history. But best of all, we were one great movement. And when I came in, I would say, we are one great movement, and people would look like this. By the time I left, they were making plaques on the wall. We are, because it was real. They owned it. They owned it, yes, yes. You know, I, I think about the, the comment that you made now and the comment that Jim made yesterday about how 5,000 days at the Girl Scouts, and you didn't describe one as being a down day, challenging days, but not down days. Tough. Tough. Tough days, but never a bad day. Never. And that's true. That's true. Could you talk about how that's possible and for the rest of us mortals who, who live uh, in the same world that, that you live in and, and have seen the, the, how great the magnitude of the challenges are, could you describe a time, for example, that you were going through when the organization felt the most pressure and, and you felt the most pressure? How did you engage people in a way for them to rise to that occasion? Well, when, when I came in, we were rather distant. There were 335 Girl Scout Councils way over here, and here was the national organization and a workforce of 650,000 men and women and uh, two and a quarter million girls. But we were, one, we were not one great movement. And like every other huge organization, or large organization, we had lived through the trauma of the 60s and early 70s. And organizations weren't sure who they were. One of the first things we did was look at girls in the program. The program hadn't been changed for 12 years. <laughs> Think what those years were like. So we got four great educators, the best people in each of those four age levels, to develop a highly contemporary program heavy on math, science, technology, and um, we had four artists who were going to illustrate the handbooks. And I asked to see the artists, and I said, now when any little girl or young woman opens her own handbook, she must be able to find herself. And the artist said, did you say any? I said, I should have said every. Well, they caught on fire, and they brought, I said, if I'm a Navajo child, on a reservation, and I open my brownie handbook, I can find myself. Well, they, their contributions, the artists, and they did such a beautiful job, as did the educators, and we started getting prizes for the best multicultural resources for children. Well, we weren't thinking we were building a multicultural, we just wanted it to be for them. And then we had a question we asked ourselves. When we looked out at all five racial, ethnic groups, communities in our own country, and then we looked at ourselves and we had solid research, uh, not, well, we assume, and Vernon Jordan then was uh, the president of National Urban League, and he had this brilliant researcher, writer, Dr. Robert Hill, who had just written The Strength of Black Families. And I went to Vernon and said, I have to have Dr. Robert Hill, we'll pay his salary, we'll pay you anything, but we want to know how do those five racial ethnic communities feel about us, and then we want to go within the organization. How do the 650,000 people in our workforce, how do they feel about bringing them in? The question we asked ourselves, when they, these people, the leaders, the girls, we wanted to bring in, when they look at us, can they find themselves? And that meant you look at the national board. What does it look like? 
30%. You look at my management team, I walk in with six people. Do they all look like me? Of course not. When the field, all those people out there, when they looked at the National, or national Board, National Staff, the materials, all of the program and training materials were so exciting and wonderfully diverse. They caught on fire because they said, they're serious. And so I think that, and at that time, we're talking about 1976, that wasn't everybody's favorite subject. But we knew if we were going to be, and we were determined to be the greatest organization in the country. If we're going to take the lead in the society, be part of the future, we had to look like the future. We had to. And so I think that was one of the most exhilarating, um, toughest, but we invested. And the message was, we respect you. We respect your culture. We have something of value for your daughter. But what did that do to the organization? Mm -hmm. Marvelous cohesion. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I left, we had the highest membership in our history. We had the greatest diversity in our history. But best of all, we were one great movement. And when I came in, I would say, we are one great movement, and people would look like this. By the time I left, they were making plaques on the wall. We are, because it was real. They owned it. They owned it, yes, yes.